Okay, I can do all that. Mm -hmm. Give me... With Chesapeake Bay gleaming Matter. in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here between the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. This will be taken very short. And he'll take it Go past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Ravens, led by the leading rusher amongst quarterbacks in 2018. In his second season now, Lamar Jackson. Jackson, options out left. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Yeah, he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before yeah. being taken down. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans, but then had a bit of a bounce back campaign a season ago in his first go around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger, but back to full health and ready to go. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. They come up first and ten at the 16. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Jackson going to get this out to Brown. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. A look now at the starters on the defensive side for the Browns. They were terrific last week in the win over the Rams. I just consider myself fortunate that I'm not in charge of the offensive line. They gave up <laughs> seven sacks last week. And if things don't improve in this game, the head coach isn't going to be looking at the offensive line. He's going to be looking at the offensive line coach. And that's when things get dicey. From the gun on third down. Jackson, he's got it to Ingram, complete. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. From the gun, Jackson to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option for him to play action. Of course, I'm going to run the good one. Right? Ravens touchdown. Wow. Mark Andrews, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their 25 yard line. Now, the third leading rusher among rookies last year, it's Nick Chubb. Ah, and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. 
Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because you oh. control the line of scrimmage. You control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. On the ground, it's Chubb. And an alley to run. And across oh, midfield he goes into Raven territory. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. The hat trick plus one. Four trips to the end zone with his legs. And partner, you know how all the guys do when they do that little symbol now about eating, right? Keep feeding me, feeding me. They just kept feeding him and feeding him. And next thing you know, he kept getting in the end zone. Oh, he tries oh, to give it to shit, Metcalf, no. but it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Hofer. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice that it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. A look there at Ingram's numbers from a week ago. 19 carries, 73 yards. From the 41, Jackson. And I know that last week's game is over, but this feels almost like a continuation of what he did in the previous game. It's almost as if in his mind, he knitted together the two weeks with no break. He's off to a nice start here. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. From midfield now, here's Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. What if they just kind of outguess themselves a little bit, trying to run it on third down? Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This to equal Matt Prater's record. It's a 64-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. So there you go, partner. How about that? Oh, that was pretty cool. That will tie the all-time record set by Matt Prater of the Broncos back in 2013. And you know when Prater hit from 64? That was like breaking DiMaggio's streak or breaking the four-minute mile of Bannister. Tom Dempsey, 63. That was a legendary number. So to top that here, even if it just ties the record, pretty darn awesome. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 26. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And oh, this one on, goes guys. nowhere. Losing that. yardage that back at the 22. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Now Mayfield. And oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. 23 yards the pick up there. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. Mayfield on first down. 
And that come on. Terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end, and that'll bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield looks to throw. And this is oh my incomplete. God. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Flush to his right. He may try and run for this. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. It's caught, back up. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the get two. Ready, a big pickup of 38. And that's now two big catches on this drive for him. You know, the NFL keeps talking about the possibility of using video for coaching on the sidelines. That's not approved yet, but you can still use pictures. They've got to send his picture down to their defense and say, you see him? Cover it. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Well, let's see here, Charles. He was sacked six times last week. Now, first quarter sack. What's going on in his mind? Well, he's thinking to himself, five offensive linemen. I got sacked six times last week. Let's start thinking about keeping extra people in. Tight end stays in. If I have a fullback or the running back, they Shit. stay in and help me block. Maybe not as many receivers in a pattern. Anything to try and slow down that pass rush. Now, a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now Mayfield on third and goal. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. D.K. Metcalf hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Bouncing back nicely from that bad opening drive where he threw the interception. Drive number two leads him right down the field and into the end zone. So obviously his confidence was never lost, and that's a good thing to see. Great quality to have, and you absolutely must maintain that as a quarterback. But I have to think that they're probably still on the script that they prepared for this game. Just the second drive, they've worked on these plays all week in practice. Put them, in, put them to good use on that one. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Second year with the Ravens for Hurst. He didn't have the rookie season he was hoping for, just 13 catches. Remember, he's older than the average second-year player. He spent two seasons as a pitcher in minor league baseball before hanging up the glove and heading to the gridiron. Now he says he's more determined than ever. Put on 20 pounds of muscle in the offseason. Says he's on a mission with a lot to prove this year. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Second down, Ingram. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. 
He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. A tackle for loss there. Two last week. He's tough to handle coming off the edge. And when you talk about a defensive end, your first thought is how does he rush the passer? That's where he makes his big plays getting into the backfield. But the best ones can play the run as well. And that's what we're seeing from him. That excellent combination of holding the point of attack and also getting upfield to make plays in the backfield. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and rare. excited is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Beckham and the Browns set to take over again. There's a lot of talk in training camp about him getting off to a hot start this year, saying that they needed that. Well, he's done it through the first month. It kind of reminds me of one of those great musical groups where one person has their name out front, then they have the backups, right? <laughs> He's the guy out front because the backups, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but we're going to the headliner each and every time. And that's not easily done because, you know, all the defenses are kicking towards him right now. That means he's fighting his way through traffic, finding ways to get open, even when he's not supposed to be. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. Mayfield now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. Here's Mayfield. Runs over him. That's out to Chubb complete. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers. Oh, he tries oh, to get it to Metcalf, right. but it's intercepted. Picked off oh, by my gosh. What Humphrey. the fuck? And a super return as he gets around. us all the way down inside the 25-yard line. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got a guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand, put it behind you, keep pressing forward. Check, check. Fresno, Fresno, Fresno. On first down, Ingram. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a second and one coming up. met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. The Ravens on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Jackson now. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews. His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year, as the Ravens push further out in front. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air, because right now, we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead now stands at 13. They have the short field, and they made quick work of it. 
Just two plays to get into the end zone. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be fielded at the six. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's go, let's go. A reminder coming up tonight, a tough ticket in New Orleans. The Cowboys in town to take on the Saints on Sunday night football. And tomorrow night, Charles and I, we go to Pittsburgh. Bengals and Steelers, two teams, well, they don't like each other very much. That's well documented. That starts at 8.15 Eastern as we close out the month of September. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Hey, a lot of luck, a lot of luck. Hey, shoot. On first and ten, Mayfield. It's caught by OBJ. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. <laughs> now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. Ooh, that's not good. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. They'll roll him out right. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. He may be playing free safety while wrapped up in a corner's body. But Earl Thomas is the best center fielder in the game. He cleans up everything back there as far as I'm concerned. I think he just has intelligence, understands things, and boy, is he tough. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 18. King, King, King. Hey, box truck, box truck. I got it. From the red zone now, Mayfield. He's got his big tight end, fan, And all the way down inside the five to the four. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Mayfield to throw it. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. Second and goal from the six this time. They run. Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season as his guys are back within a single score. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Cybert on for the PAT. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. So here comes the kickoff, and what now is just a one-score, six-point game. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here we go. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. First month of the season, those numbers pretty solid. Does he continue that? I think so, because when you come out of the gate this strong, 
that means that you have planned for it and you like the results that you're getting. So I wouldn't have any doubt that the head coach, offensive coordinator, actually called in, <laughs> called him in and said, look, you're our guy, okay? We're going to continue to stick with this as long as we're winning games. You ready for the challenge? And then they presented it to the rest of the team. I think we'll see plenty of that as the season moves on. And I'm sure he said challenge accepted. The throw there finding its way to Boyle. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Jackson now. Only one pass has hit the ground for him. 10 and 11 thus far. It's first and 10. Jackson. It's complete to Snee. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. 10 yards on the pick up. It's second and inches. At the 40 Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now it's Jackson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Nice throw there by Jackson. You think about what a boost he gave Baltimore in the middle of last year. Led them to victories in six of their last seven games as a starter. Replacing Joe Flacco, who had the hip issue. And that strong finish was good enough for the Ravens to capture their first AFC North crown since 2012. And now Jackson's a known commodity. He's the unquestioned starter. And with increased expectations and pressure on the former Heisman Trophy winner. Second and 12, Jackson got a man, it's Brown. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Jackson and the offense come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. They'll fake the give to Ingram, now Jackson. Oh, That's God. going to be caught. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Nick Boyle, his first touchdown on the year. As the Ravens push further out in front. Now Tucker to add the PAT. It used to be that if you were a big wide receiver and the coaches wanted to make you a tight end, you resisted the move. Now it's almost a glamour position because they have the mismatch advantage. Are you going to cover them with a linebacker? They're probably faster. A defensive back, they're going to be bigger. Tight end is the new big-time position. This will be fielded at the eight. And an excellent return there as he's up to the 35 to make it the 40-yard line. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. The Browns drive about to get started. And Charles Hoy touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing. It's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Mayfield now, buying time to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run, deep left side. Oh, come and on. going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, on
All the defensive guys have been talking about is we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. On third down, Mayfield. And the throw there going to be incomplete. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Let's go. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. You can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. A gain of six there on first. Jackson's killing it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. From the gun on third down, Jackson under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Miles Garrett has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game watching this offensive line because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit, right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Hey, Delta. On second down, Mayfield again. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. The Browns on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, Mayfield. This one into the hands of Metcalf. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. DK Metcalf with touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year as his guys are back within a single score. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes. That's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far and fun to watch. Extra point by Seibert up and good. And that will get him one closer. So here comes the kickoff. And what now is just a one score, six point game. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. 
Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Jackson, option right. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. On second and 11 now. Jackson, this will be caught by Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Jackson now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. They run from the pistol with Ingram. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Devin White in there to take him down on what will take us to the two-minute warning. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. He goes underneath to Ingram, and he gets this only to the 44-yard line, not near enough to keep the drive alive. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He'll field this at the five. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. Doesn't matter where you start with the football now, they have to feel great about their opportunity. Throwing, Mayfield, flushed out right. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. It's a safety blitz and a sack for Earl Thomas. Mayfield trying to get him up to the line as fast as he can. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely been on constant duress this entire Aww. game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Jeepers, I can't complete that. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time to make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Watch out for Hill on the return. A big hitter that time in the punt game. 66 yards on the boot. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. That first down completion only netted them three. Second and seven. <laughs> 
Now it's Jackson letting one go deep for Roberts. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. On third down, Jackson. Steed's got it. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he'll go ahead and field this at the five. So a change of possession here on the punt. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. You're under 30 seconds to go. Field position not great. Time to call it a half, wouldn't you say? Well, you know we all have that little extra gene that says let's push the envelope a little bit, right? What needs to be going through the play caller's mind right now, a potential fumbled snap that can get returned, a strip sack that can get returned, right? Any of those types of plays. That's and the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Matt Judon. Just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Final play of the half, Mayfield escaping the pressure right. Now he's going to let it go deep right sideline. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, folks, eager to get back to this week four matchup. We won't put up a fight. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. This is taken at his four. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance yeah. like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. What? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot oh, connect. Oh, my God. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. On fourth down, they snap it to Mayfield, eluding the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I fucked this up. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And the second wave ah. of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. On second and 11 now, Mayfield. This is the tight end fan. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. 
Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Now Pollard. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. We've seen this offense go for it on fourth down already on this drive. I wonder if they'll go for it again. I certainly wouldn't rule it out with these guys. They'll run for it with Pollard. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Chubb on the counter, and he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. There's the first NFL catch for the former Georgia Bulldog, Nicole Hardman. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They run again on first down, Chubb. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Play fake, Mayfield. And this is caught at the eight. And all the way oh, down nice. inside the five to the four. Nice, 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 nice. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. You yeah, have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half, just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the mic. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Miko Hardman with his first career NFL touchdown as his guys can now take the lead with the extra point. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Extra point by Seibert up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now a first carry for their fullback. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. After a play like that, there should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And Jackson get down. cannot get away, and he'll go down. Miles Garrett in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. And that no. goes to the angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. 
That is how you Fuck. put field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A run for Nick Chubb. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Being chased out left. Now Mayfield lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. And a big turning point here in the second half, Charles, after that play. All you're trying to do is change momentum, flip things around for your team. You're just trying to take the ball away. How about when you take it? And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on the two-point try. Uh, they had the big play on the fumble return. They were looking for the one-two punch, but they couldn't get that two-point conversion. And I have to wonder, were they scheduled to go ahead and kick the extra point? But after a play like that, you talk about the one-two punch, right? It's a momentum play. Go for two and really try to capitalize, and that's what they attempted. The Browns drive about to get started. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. Hey, dude. From the 41, Mayfield forced out to his left. And he can't no! to go with it, and he goes down. Tyus Bowser gets him for a loss of five. He is so tough to handle on the blitz, and that's exhibit A. Working out of the gun, Mayfield, and that will be incomplete. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. On third down, Ingram. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. And they have the first down with that gain of four yards. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together, a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Tackle made that time by Vita Vea. Jackson, option right. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry is a defense. 
that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Patrick Owasor in there to record another sack, and that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Browns with a deficit. They're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. On second and 15 now, Mayfield. That ball complete to Isabella, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Baker Mayfield as a rookie three times. He led the Browns back to victory in the fourth quarter. What can he do here in year number two? Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, whatever. He wants to At the 46-yard line. Andy is a wow. was the intended target. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's Then right. with the Eagles. That's right. He's then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Throwing on second down. Jackson. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. He was looking for Mark Ingram there, and it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and 10. To throw is Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was affected, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. And that is no good. I hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in, and this score will stay right where it is. But this was still going to be a one-score game either way, but still, that's a potentially harmful miss here in the fourth. It certainly is, because if you consider that now if they give up a touchdown, they give up the lead. So he might be getting the side eye by the defenders coming out on the field now as he goes back to the bench after that miss. Oh, throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and ten. He'll find Metcalf. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain there of 21 yards. And he's over 100 yards now after that last catch. Already, of course, leading the NFL in receiving yardage. So he's done nothing at all to hurt his cause to stay in that spot. But I've been so impressed with how he's gotten it done. Body. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Oh. It's the former Seahawks, oh. Thomas. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. And now a carry here for their fullback. The big man, get the oxygen tank ready. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. Okay. That one good for 33 and a first. There's a lot of good on that play when we see the big fella take it and rumble into the secondary. 
But how about the big part of it, taking care of the football? He doesn't carry it very often, but when he does, he's got to make sure that he doesn't get it popped free. Unlike Mike Tolbert in Super Bowl 50, carrying the ball, ball popped free, turnover, and it hurt his team. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. Oh, and we're getting out a couple yards wow, shy okay. of midfield at the 48. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. First down, it's Jackson. Robert's got it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Defense. About three, five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Jackson's throw on target to Willie Sneed. Ooh, it's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Jackson now perfect since the second half started. Seven to seven. It's first and ten. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Mac Wilson in there to record the second sack of his young NFL career. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Here's Jackson on third and long. And the pressure gets to him again. Miles Garrett racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. He is proving his worth defensively. Getting the sack here, that comes after being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in last week's game. He's stacking games together, isn't he? I mean, you just mentioned what he did the previous week to be named AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Continuing to play at that level. And when you get that kind of confidence going, those kind of guys are hard to stop. Well, now they're up by eight. From a defensive Great. perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Let's go. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. To throw, Mayfield flush to his right. Oh, come on, Mayfield. It's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, and it's third and short. A big play, third and two. This crowd dying for a stop. Now Mayfield. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Andy Isabella was the intended target. And it's second down. A second down throw for Mayfield. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. 
What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. <laughs> but correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. And now here is another interception. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. It's just, it's, just, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. To throw on third down. Jackson. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Miles Garrett, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. Good. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, that one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. Hurry, hurry. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Mayfield. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Mayfield now. And that's going to be incomplete. Oh, uh, what? Tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Where is he going with that? Third down throw incomplete as well. Oh, my God. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks... They'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you rock perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite throw. I couldn't even run. Make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. So they converted their first two fourth down attempts, not the line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and ten. Jackson options out left. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Here's Jackson to throw. It's complete to Snead. And he's brought down after a very nice game. 23 yards the pick up there. Jackson now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Offense. 
That's going to set him back five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. Ingram again. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. And this defense here going to burn their second timeout. But you can also factor in another timeout that they'll get when the clock stops at the two-minute warning. And it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. And now here comes the third of their timeouts defensively. So they'll be left with only the two-minute warning to stop Nobody. it from here on out. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Great. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They need to get the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you just hold a slim lead, but that punt, Absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. Mayfield. He's got his big tight end, fan, And they'll get him down right at around the 11-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Mayfield to throw it. And finding the tight end, Wilson. And all the way down to the 40-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. And that is he has to hold on to that. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. Yeah, to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A gain there of 21 yards. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. I can't hear you. Here. Okay. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. Hey, Charlie! Back to throw. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. This defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far, they're not putting up much of a fight. If they don't get a stop here soon, this game could be over for them. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. 
The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's throwing it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Here's Mayfield. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. DK Metcalf there to make the grab as they now sit just a two-point conversion away from tying this game up in the fourth quarter here we go the browns will go for two the touchdown is huge but the focus now is on the two-point play i don't want to say they have a cushion here but if they don't get it they still have a chance for onside kick. Yeah, they would need some big time help but you're right there would be a shot but the focus right now on that two-point conversion huge huge conversion there to tie this thing up but they're not done yet their defense needs to get a stop yeah there's still plenty of time for the other team to come downfield and put some points on the board but job one was taken care of the two-point conversion to get this thing tied this fielded at the two and not a bad return here he gets it out to the 25 yard line and the Ravens taking the field they've got work to do but they do still have a bit of time here and they've got to feel comfortable with that but they have all their play sequences called if they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously... And that is intercepted by the Pro Bowl quarterback, Denzel Ward. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. I get and appreciate that they wanted to go for the win, not play for overtime, but that's the cost right there. Not so sure their fans feel the same way as you when they just watch that ball get picked and taken the other way, and now they're down six. Looks like it's going to be a loss for them, an absolute catastrophe when they tried to be aggressive. Extra point by Seibert, up and good, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Get down! So Jackson in the offense. Down by seven, 54 seconds to go. They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Back to the air, Jackson following the pick six. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Miles Garrett in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. He'll look to throw. And oh! A crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, the rookie from Florida. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. Following the interception, Mayfield. This is the tight end fan. And he's got this down Come to here. the 35. Got you. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. Andy Isabella was the intended target. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, 
you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in yep. the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about. If you're... And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. And it's a fumble. And I think they are going to get this one back. Well, that would have been something. Double turnovers. But instead, they'll keep the possession on the INT. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Cleveland, hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 on the new campaign. And they'll get another road test next week as they have to go to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they'll fall back to 500 at 2-2. Two and two. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Heinz Field to take on the Steelers. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Sucked. Oh. Jesus, Baker, you really sucked. <laughs>